it's safe to say that there are few moments in a pilot's career that are as momentous as your first solo. So, I'm assuming you would like to do one by yourself? I would let you. love to do one by myself. Oh, well, I'll get out then in that case. <laughs> So guys, welcome back to this episode where I share with you my first solo in a helicopter. Taking off in helicopter. So guys, you join me and James here in the cockpit of the Cabri G2 with a call sign of Heli Center 29. We're just about to lift and go off and do some circuit training and unbeknown to me, he's going to ask me if I want to go solo for the first time. Tail clear to left. Heli Center 2-9 taking off on way 2 way. Okay. Happy to go. Forty five knots. That was it. Okay, fuel is sixty four liters. Heli Center 29 is downwind, 28 left hand for the H. Heli Center 29 final for the H. 20 degrees head up. So as we make our last approach down into the airfield, I'm just going to take you through how we're operating at the aerodrome today. As you can see on the screen, we're operating at Leicester Aerodrome, where the H, where we make our takeoffs and approaches to, is located pretty much in the centre of the airfield. The runway in use today is runway 28 with a left hand pattern for rotary at 700 feet and a right hand circuit for fixed wing at 1000 feet. And as you can see on the screen, we're operating on the purple line, which is the left hand pattern for runway 28, where the takeoff and approach angles are slightly offset just to make sure we don't stray into the fixed wing circuit. Now join me back in the cockpit where we're going to put the aircraft on the ground. James will give me a quick briefing and then he's going to send me off to do my first solo in a helicopter. Good, let's just do another landing here, please. Okay. Okay, you control? You have control. Okay then, so... I'm assuming you would like to do one by yourself? I would let you. love to do one by myself. Oh, well... I'll get out then in that case. <laughs> Couple of things just to be aware of. Yeah. You're losing an instructor's worth of weight. Yeah. So it's going to get light on the skids much earlier than you used to. Um, 10% earlier, perhaps, uh, perhaps more than uh, more than that even. Okay. And it's going to climb a lot faster. You're not going to lose as much power downwind, and you're going to have to have a lower collective on the approach as well. Okay. So what's going to happen to the centre of gravity? It's going to be more right and rearwards, hence forward and left cyclic. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing that is really going to be different for you. So just take that take off really steady. Make sure you've got the right cyclic position before you lift. Okay. Great. Into the hover. Um, it's going to be student heli center 29 as well, so I'm just going to let them know now that the okay. call sign is changing. Left uh, heli center 29, uh, change your call sign to student heli center 29 for first solo. Heli center 29, Roger. Okay, any oh, questions? Yeah. I'm happy, yeah. Good. Alright. Okay. Just give me a moment to, to jump out. Yeah, of course. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I'll give you the call to lift and I'll give you a thumbs up when it's clear to go. Awesome. Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> one auto rotating just behind. Okay, 
Okay, both cabin doors are closed, harnesses are fastened. Pulling in the power, RPM is in the green. Okay, a lot lighter than before. Okay, so warning lights throughout T's and P's are in the green. 42 litres RPM is stable 72% and car P is auto. Student Helix on T9 ready for departure from the H. Student in the game 240 degrees 5 knots. Taking off student Helix on T9. Okay. Alright, good. So now to take off from the hover, I push forwards on the cyclic and pull some collective to build some forward airspeed. Okay, increasing speed. Okay, we're above 45, rotating. After reaching 45 knots, we then look to rotate and then climb out at 60 knots. Looking for 60 knots. A lot more power available than previous. Not to 88% power. I'm in. Left the radio. Ahead is sensor 28. Request airfield information and radio check. Ahead is 28 left radio. Three to 25. From way in use 28 left hand for rotary. QFE 1003. QNH 1020. So climbing up away from the airfield at 60 knots, I'm looking for a networking mass, which is the point where I turn crosswind. And once I reach 700 feet above the ground, I select 17 knots to cruise at and maintain 700 feet. Awesome. Coming up to 700, 70 knots. And crosswind. Shooting heli sensor 2 9 downwind. Okay, engine, morning lights are out, T's and P's. Are in the green, 43 litres RPM in the green, 56% power, 700 foot. DI and compass can't really change. Trim is fine. So that was me doing a free dat check, which is basically checking the fuel, making a radio call, checking the engine is all healthy looking at the DI to make sure it's aligned with the compass, checking the altitude and then making sure the aircraft's nicely trimmed for the approach. So despite the nerves of your first solo and you're constantly busy trying to do things, on the downwind leg it's always the best time to take a moment and take it all in the fact that you're actually flying a helicopter on your own and the left seat is empty next to you. But whilst flying around the circuit, you're always looking out for other traffic and listening out on the radio as well, as this is the best indication to where people are and what they're doing. Okay, nothing seen around, turning base. Bit fast. Aircraft ahead on final, visual, nothing else seen, nothing else heard. Whilst flying base, it not only gives you a really good view of the long final approach path into the airfield, but also a view of the opposite circuit where the fixed wing are flying. Alright, turning final. Down to next to effect. Helicopter 28 grass, one on final for 28. Student Ellis under 29, final for the H2A. Student 297 to indicate in 240 degrees 8 knots. So Leicester Airport has an air ground operator, which basically means we don't get given permission to land, but I've now called final for the H, which means I should have priority. Okay, good. 500 foot, 60 knots. On the approach. Okay, 
just slowing down. A bit fast. Helicopter 28 grass, one final, nothing else changed. Continuing. So after locating where the H is on the airfield, I'm constantly starting to lower the collective and pull back on the cyclic to slow the helicopter down. This is to make a constant angle approach all the way down into the hover above the H. Okay, all clear around, good. A little bit low, pulling in a bit of power just to keep this angle slowing down as well. H is clear. So as I come down into the H, we're going to slow down even further, which means we're going to lose translational lift, which is created by moving forwards through the air. So that means we need to pull more power on the collective to equal the weight of the helicopter and bring it into a hover. Okay, just establishing the hover. Okay, and then coming down. Perfect. Yeah. Alright, down first solo done. Hello, how do you go? Oh, good, good. No, I'm happy that was that was good. Great stuff, cool. Yes, All right. We'll uh, go back for tea and medals, I think. Woo. Well done. Perfect. <laughs> hey, you're right. I just, I need, I needed a lot less power. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I didn't think I'd feel it as much, but I did. Okay, good. All right, so I did freeze around. Three, seven, eight, 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 eight. Another. Okay. Down. Whew, quite hot. <laughs> Okay, good. So guys, thank you very much for coming along with me in the cockpit. I hope you enjoyed it because I certainly did and it was a moment I'll hold fond in my memory for the rest of my life. If you haven't already, give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel so you can see more videos like this in the future. Go and check out my Facebook and Instagram account so you can keep up to date with what's happening on the channel in the future. But for now, I'll see you in the next one.